There are two different types of prompts that can be used, a basic and an advanced prompt. A basic prompt is what we learned in this video up here, and it's really just a basic text string or an emoji. Advanced prompts have three parts, image URLs, the prompt text, and one or more parameters. The image URLs go first in the beginning, then the prompt text goes right in the middle, and then at the end is where we throw all of our parameters. Parameters are options or settings that you throw at the end of your prompt that will change how Midjourney generates your image. Midjourney has a large list of parameters that you can use in many ways to help generate your images. Parameters are added at the end of a prompt and you use two hyphens to add a parameter. Let's take a look at the parameters that are best suited for architecture images. Aspect ratios can be changed by using the aspect parameter. On version four of Midjourney, the default is one to one, and you can choose between one to one, which is square, one to two, which is portrait, and two to one, which is landscape. On version five of Midjourney, you can choose higher ratios if you would like, for example, three to one and one to four. The chaos parameter will change how crazy and varied your results will be. You can choose any number between zero and 100, and the default is set to be zero. The no parameter will attempt to omit or remove something specific from your image. The quality parameter will determine which quality you want your render to be. It does not affect the resolution, but it will determine how much time is spent rendering your image. Lower values are good for low detail images. If you are creating architectural images or drawings, then a higher quality would likely be better. You can use 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or 1, and the default is actually set to 1. Uplight and up beta parameters are the same options you see after you have upscaled an image, but this time it'll output an image grid for you rather than just one image. Uplight creates images that are slightly softer with less details, and up beta creates an image grid that has significantly less details. The stylized parameter is useful because Midjourney AI has been trained to favor images that have artistic color, composition, and form. A lower stylized value simply means it'll be less artistic and a higher stylized value is more artistic. When using versions 4 and 5, the default style value is set to 100. In my work though, I hardly notice a difference of a value over around 250 to 300, even though it can go all the way up to 1000. In Midjourney, you can create a short video of your image being created, although it's only available in specific model versions. 1, 2, 3, test, and test P. Model version parameters are useful if you would like to get a very specific type or style of an image. Niji is best if you would like to create anime style images. High definition is best for landscape and abstract images. You can try to use test P for photorealistic images, although I typically just write photorealistic or photorealism in the prompt and it gives me pretty great output. And most importantly of all is the version 4 and version 5 parameters. For architecture images at the moment, I prefer to use Midjourney version 4, but I would recommend playing around with version 5 to see which one you like more. Version 5, in my opinion, is much more photorealistic, whereas version 4 is trained on much more of an artistic style, and it produces something more along the lines of an illustration or photorealistic rendering. Next, we're going to take a look at more advanced parameters in settings like remix mode, seed, blend, and image weight. Some of these use what is called an image URL. Simply put, it's just a link to an image that you've uploaded to Discord or a link to an image on the internet. You can use image URLs as part of a prompt to influence the render composition, style, and color. You can use the image URLs even by themselves, or you can combine them with text prompts and other parameters. You can even put multiple image URLs in the same prompt. Remix mode is used to change prompts, parameters, model versions, and aspect ratios between different iterations. It will create a new image that resembles your initial image, which will help you take away or add anything that you initially forgot. On top of that, you can change the setting, the lighting, you can transform the subject, or create a more complicated scene. It's actually very similar to the seed parameter, which we're gonna learn in just a moment. To use Remix, we can turn it on in two different ways. Type in slash prefer Remix, type enter, and now Remix mode is turned on. Another way to turn it on is by typing slash settings, pressing enter. Here at the bottom is Remix mode, which you can toggle on and off. I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss this message. Now let's try to use remix mode. So I'm gonna imagine an image, Gothic style, mid-century home in the middle of the desert. Let's just have some fun with this one and press enter. So this is the image that it output and to initiate remix mode, we're gonna click one of the variations here at the bottom. 
I like number three the most, so I'm gonna click variation number three. And now you can see a new prompt has come up, the remix prompt. Let's say that I wanna add people walking around. Type it in and click submit. It's created an image that is very similar to one that I liked in the beginning, but now Midjourney has remixed it so that there's more people walking around. You can also remix an upscaled image. So my favorite out of these will be number three again. So I'm gonna click upscale three. And now if you click make variations, you can now make variations to an upscaled image. A seed is a field of visual noise that the AI uses to create the initial 4x4 grid. Every image that we create is given a seed number by Midjourney. The seed parameter initially sounds pretty confusing, but it's extremely useful and it can be used in many different ways. Every job you run will be given a seed number by default. You can choose a seed number yourself by using the seed parameter in your initial prompt. To use the seed parameter, do dash dash seed and then type in a number that you would like the seed to be. I'm gonna just use simply one, two, three for this. It's a mid-century modern home in the style of Zaha Hadid, located in the Joshua Tree Desert with seed number one, two, three, and press enter. Let's say that you created an image previously, but you didn't designate a seed number for it. You can scroll up to it, and then you're going to emote to the image by hovering over it, clicking add reaction, and then clicking the envelope. Scroll down to the bottom, Midjourney is going to send you a direct message of the image with its seed number and job ID. The image that I previously created, the mid-century modern home in the Joshua Tree Desert, remember I gave it the seed number 123. So if I add a reaction to that with the envelope, Midjourney will then send me its job ID and seed number, and you can see here that it is still 123. If you run a job with the same prompt, and the same seed number, then it will come out exactly the same. If you change the text in the prompt slightly, it'll try to adjust the image for you according to what you changed. So for instance, I ran the same job with the same seed number, but I changed it to be matte black. So you can see this looks very similar to this style. This is useful when you create an image of a building that you really like, but you don't like certain aspects about it like the color or the weather, or maybe you wanna add scale people to it. It's very similar to the variation command, but with this, you have control over what is being adjusted rather than Midjourney making random adjustments for you. Seed is slightly different than Remix because a Remix can only be applied to an image that you have already made. And then it will create a new one off of your adjustments. A seed adjustment can be applied to an image that you have made in the past, present, and future, meaning you can make callbacks to images that you've made in the past. Adding an image URL into your prompt is a total game changer. In order to add an image URL into your prompt, you need to first upload the image to Discord. You can click plus here, and then upload a file, find the file, and then click open, then press enter. Or you can simply drag and drop it into Discord, and then press enter. Once the image is in Discord, you right click it, and select copy link. This is an image URL and it will go at the beginning of your prompt. So we'll start off our prompt with slash imagine and then we'll paste in our image URL. Then you'll do a space and let's do a building on Mars and then press enter. So Midjourney will take cues from that image URL or the image that you uploaded and it will create a building on Mars using that image as inspiration. The image that it output you can see takes on a lot of cues from the International Space Station. In Midjourney 5, you can use the image weight parameter. Unfortunately, image weight doesn't work in Midjourney 4. You'll quickly realize that if you have a prompt with an image in it and some text, you'll want to choose which one that Midjourney will favor more. To use image weight, let's first switch over to Midjourney version 5 by typing slash settings, enter, and then toggling over to MJ version 5. I'm going to dismiss the message. Let's say that you wanted to create a high-rise building in Japan, but you really wanted it to look like the Seagram's building by Mies van der Rohe. Slash imagine. And let's pull the Seagram's building into Discord. You can do that by the way I showed you previously, by dragging it into Discord, or you can do a simple Google search for the Seagram's building. Images. Find the image that best represents the building that you like 
I'm going to do this one. Right click it and select copy image address. Let's head back over in a discord, paste that image into your prompt, do space, and then type a building in Tokyo, Japan. Right now, Midjourney would probably blend these two together. It would blend a building in Tokyo, Japan, and with the Seagrams building. Image weight is default at one and can be anything between 0.25 to two. The higher the image weight, then the more effective the image will have on the render. I'm gonna run three different prompts. One is going to be without the image weight. Two is going to be with the image weight set to its highest value, which is two. And then I'm gonna do one where the image weight is set to zero. And let's do a sustainable building in New York City with trees all over it. And lastly is the blend command. Blend is a simplistic way to blend two to five images together. And it was developed so that you can easily do it from your phone. So you can find a lot of uses there while you're out and about. Choose two to five images and Midjourney will take the concept and aesthetics of each image and blend them all into one singular new image. So right now saved on my computer, I have the Hadar Eliev Center by Zaha Hadid and Falling Water designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. I'm gonna type in slash blend. With blend, you can do two to five images, but it defaults to two. I'm gonna show you how to do two. If you wanna add more, you just click down here and select image three and image four. But for now, we'll just do two. Click image one, and I'm gonna do the Hadar Eliev Center by Zaha Hadid. And then I'm gonna do Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright. You can change the dimensions of the output by clicking down in the prompt and selecting dimensions. I want this to be landscape and then hit enter. And this is what Midjourney thinks Frank Lloyd Wright and Zaha Hadid's Falling Water and the Hadar Eliev Center would look like blended together. Over there are two videos that I think you'll really enjoy. And if you like the video, please like the video, subscribe down below to see future content just like this. Right beside me are a list of patrons from Patreon. If you sign up, you get a lot of great architecture related benefits and your name gets featured at the end of the video, like these amazing people right here.